Morning all, happy Saturday. <clears throat> I have been asked a few times in the last couple of weeks how I got into coaching. So I thought I'd jump on here and share my story for anyone that it might resonate with. Um, so I remember this strong feeling when I was growing up, like I was really lucky enough to grow up in a, a gorgeous, loving, happy family. Um, we're all still really, really close now and I'll get to see them very, very soon. So I'm really excited about that. Um, heading back home for a trip in August. And um, yeah, so I was lucky enough to be raised in a, in a happy, loving family. I know a lot of other people are not fortunate in the way that I was. But I remember growing up with this kind of sense of longing, like I, now looking back on it from my adult brain, um, back to my 15 year old self, I remember these tortured feelings of kind of like longing, like I felt this this hole in my solar plexus area, that's just above your belly button. It kind of is where we feel that knot of fear. And I felt this empty kind of feeling there. And I really didn't understand where that came from because I had nothing to worry about, right? Like I had this happy, loving family. So I didn't understand where this sense of longing and loneliness, I think, came from. I mean, you could put it down to teenage hormones, but, you know, I felt this, I felt this real sense of, um, life is so much more than what I was seeing around me. So what I was seeing around me was you go to school, get good grades, good, go to uni, get good grades, you know, work in a job that hopefully you, you like, but a lot of the time I was seeing people really not enjoying what they were doing. Um, you know, buy a house and be in debt your whole life and find someone who will put up with your shit for long enough where you can knock out a couple of kids and get married. Now, it's not that I don't want the conventional lifestyle, but there was this real sense inside me that there was so much more to life than what I was seeing. And I didn't really know why I felt that way. And, you know, years into personal development now, 20 plus years into personal development now, now I get it. There is so much stuff that we're not taught at school. So, so, so much stuff that we're not taught at school or by our parents or by really anyone until we kind of get to a point of crisis where we have to start learning these things, right? So, um, so I got, it was very, a very natural progression for me to kind of get into, um, psychology at school because I found I was, I was that friend at school where my friends would come to, uh, to speak to me with their problems. I would say a bunch of stuff and they would walk away feeling better and I'd feel really good because I'd help someone. Um, and so, so at school I got into psychology, I got into philosophy, philosophy, I felt like was great because I had all these really deep philosophical questions about what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? Like I, re I really vividly remember being sat on my bed trying to imagine what happens when we die, not in a morbid way, but literally sitting there thinking, okay, what happens when all of this is gone? Knowing that I'm much more than just this, right? Like what happens when my physical body isn't here anymore? What happens to the rest of me? Um, and I just like my mind was being blown. I just couldn't I didn't have any answers. So I got into philosophy, which had all the same kind of questions and no one really had an answer. Right. Everyone had a bunch of theories, but no one had an answer. Psychology I loved because it was really about working with people's minds, looking at where their problems came from, helping them through their problems. So I very much stuck with psychology. I went to uni, got a degree in psychology, got a master's in forensic psychology and carried on with that train. Loved it, still love it now. But when I, as I, when I was choosing my masters, I was kind of looking at, do I go down the counseling road because I do love helping people? Or do I get into forensic psychology? Because I love, like I froth on psychology and crime. Um, and I decided with forensic psychology, so I very much went down that road. There was something that was putting me off counseling at the time and I didn't know what it was until I got into coaching. And that's because now looking back on it, I can see that counselling for me is quite often sitting there talking about a problem for an hour or several problems for an hour. And I work with a lot of coaching clients now who've been, some of them have been counselling with the same counsellor for like 10 years. And I just think, why? You know, what are you getting out of it? I just, you know, are you working on fixing the problem, working on the solutions, or are you just having a brain dump for an hour each week? So looking back on that period of time in my life, I can see that coaching is solution focused therapy, basically. So you're looking, you're talking about the problem for as long as you need to before you get into looking at what the solutions are and where you want to go instead. 
So, um, so that kind of became my life. It, it became very natural for me to get into coaching. Um, you know, back when I got into it, coaching was not a big thing at all. And, and fast forward to now, I've been working as a coach and, and in energy work as well. So I got into um, doing energy treatments 18 years ago and uh, started teaching Reiki as well. So right now I do change and trauma coaching. So helping people through times of change um, and recovering from past trauma and um, and also do energy treatments and teach energy work. So um, I love everything I do. My biggest passion is to help people to really figure out who their tr true authentic self is and look at what's in the way of that. Look at any past trauma that needs to be cleared. Look at um, you know what needs to be healed and resolved from the past. What are your values? What are your needs? What are your priorities in life who are you without being all the different hats that you put on yourself so often I'll ask someone you know tell me tell me more about yourself they'll be like oh I'm a wife I'm a mum I do this for a job I'm like no no who are you at a soul level who are you how would you describe yourself if you didn't assign any roles to yourself um and you know who I am is someone that absolutely loves helping to people to become their best self. That is my number one passion in life and helping them to clear all the shit that's in the way that is holding them back from being their best self. So <clears throat> when I really got into my career in around 2006, 2007, I found that being a helper type and a lot of helper types who are watching this will resonate with this. I seemed to attract a lot of people with broken wings not everybody wanted to help and that's totally fine. Everyone's on their own path. But what I found happening around me in my personal life as well was lots of, uh, I lost a lot of friends, unfortunately, to suicide over the years. Nearly lost a few more. Um, I've been, I had a real good run over a 20 year period of pretty shit relationships where I allowed myself to be emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially abused. Um, and that all came down to a lack of self-love at the end of the day. So I found myself attracting people into my life who were more than happy to take advantage. And because of being a helper and a giver type, I allowed myself to not have strong boundaries to the point where I was giving to my detriment at a time when I needed it the most. And that led to me getting burnt out several times, me going into depression a couple of times, um, and me really having to learn the tools for myself that helped me out of those shit situations. And, it, and like I said earlier, I've spent over 20 years in personal development and healing for myself first, always first before I work on anyone else. And in that time, I've learned so like hundreds of tools. I don't even know how many tools I've learned. But in that time, I've learned kind of like a form, I've come up with a formula of what I call from surviving to thriving. So um, I found myself using a lot of the same tools over and over and over again with myself, for myself and with my coaching and my energy work clients. And so I kind of found myself putting that together in a structure, um, which I call from surviving to thriving, which is helping you figure out how the fuck did I end up here? If you're feeling lost, stuck, burnt out, thinking about suicide, you've got depression, anxiety, you just don't know where to go with yourself or your life. Um, you know, the, one of the most important things to look at is how did I end up here? Because you can easily say, oh, this just crept up on me. But actually, when you really reflect on it, you can see all the triggers and the warning signs and the red flags that you ignored for days, weeks, months, sometimes years, often years. And all the emotional baggage um, that has happened in your past that you haven't resolved yet and all the maladaptive coping strategies that you're currently using, like drinking too much or using drugs or overusing prescribed medication or overexercising, overeating, oversleeping, whatever your go to coping tool is, um, that is how you've been coping with what has happened to you in your life so far. So the initial stages of what I do with people is really looking at how did you get here? What are your triggers and warning signs that would show you that you're veering back in that direction in the future? What can we do about that? What are your needs? What are your values? What are your goals? What do you what, what do you actually want for yourself in your life? Do you even know? Do you even know what you find fun to do? 
there were times when I had depression and, and was burnt out where I just I was like a shell of myself and I could not have even told you one thing that I found t fun to do at that point point. and I'm someone that loves having fun I've got so many different interests but when I was feeling that way I didn't know I couldn't have told you I was too tired to even fucking think about it <laughs> so if you're in that space now keep an eye on my pages because I have something that I'm about to release that I'm really excited about that will look at all of those things that I mentioned before and really help you to break free from where you're at right now um, also with a bunch of nervous system regulating exercises which I've really been focused on in the last few years um, looking at how to reset the nervous system which is a massive part of stress anxiety depression Whatever it is that you're experiencing that's not good, your nervous system is definitely part and parcel of all of that as well, right? So what I have coming up is a formula to help you to get unstuck, to really figure out who you are on a deep soul level, what makes you tick, what makes you float, what, what gives you meaning and purpose in life and giving you the tools and the structure to help you get there. So if that sounds like something that you want to take part in i have a very limited amount of spots for this right now so i've got uh, 20 spots that i'm opening up for for this particular round of from surviving to thriving four spots are already gone um, and i haven't even properly released any details yet so um if you are watching this and it's speaking to you drop me a ready in the comments below and i or drop me a private message if you want to um and comment replay if you're watching the replay too i'd love to know who's watching um and yeah if it speaks to you let me know let's chat we'll get on a call and talk through your current situation all right guys have the best day have the best weekend and i will catch you on the flip side